Welcome back, everybody. This is our Algebra 2 Exponential Functions Lesson Number 10, Laws of Logarithms Home Review, Part 2. Part 2. If you haven't had a chance to please catch Part 1, it definitely goes over our three laws of logs, the, the product rule, the quotient rule, and the power rule. Super helpful when trying to figure this out. Okay? Uh, we begin with question number five, and it's a little bit different from some of the other questions we had before, because we're trying to express this log of 200, uh, because, uh, and we're given log of five equals P, and log of two equals Q. And we can find P and Q decimal-wise, but it would be kind of hard to play around with these, so we will use our laws of logs to figure this out. It'll, it'll, it'll hopefully it'll help us out, though. So what we want to do is figure out, well, 200. How can this written in, I guess, how many fives and twos as far as factors go? So we do something called prime factorization, in this case, a factor tree. 200. And if you remember this from middle school, we'll break it down to, uh, to all the prime, the product of prime numbers, okay, prime factors in this case. And so we begin two numbers that multiply to 200. Okay, well, that would be maybe two and 100. And we're looking for twos and fives, twos and fives. So we'd already got two. Fantastic. All right. So then we look at 100. What's your numbers multiply 100? Well, let's see now. Probably 10 and 10. Still not two and five yet, but we know that 10 is two times five which in this case, we have a two here and we have a five here. Again, we're looking at these numbers here, log of two, log of five, those twos and fives, we're trying to play, try to figure out how, um, how many times we multiply them to get 200. So repeat this again, 10 is two and five. Five. And so we see here that 200 is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 times 5, which means log of 200 is equal to the log of, the, well, we said the log of 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 times 5 which we will then, I'll make some little space here, rewrite using, a, using our product rule. <clears throat> if we have these numbers multiplying inside the log, we can rewrite them as simple logs of the sums. So log of two times two times two times five times five becomes log of two plus log of two plus log of two plus log of five, oh, hopefully I fit this in, plus log of five. Oh, it comes crashing into that tree. Okay, let's see if I can move this away a little bit here. Where's those, oops, no, uh, it's not spinning in them. Move this aside, oh wait, no, I lost that, lost that little, uh, little green circle here. There you go, all right, there you go. <laughs> and so, what was the use of all this? Why do we break down log of 200 into this log of twos and logs of fives? Wait a minute. We want all answers in terms of P and Q. So we're gonna replace every log of five with P. So we see a, a log of five here, that's P, and here's another P, so plus and plus. And every log of two replaced with Q. So here's Q plus Q plus Q. So we see in this case, if we add P's and Q's, we're gonna get in this case, well, here's 2P, and here's 3Q, 2P plus 3Q, and that'll be choice four. Oh, sorry, <laughs> not choice four, oops. I mixed them up, sorry. <laughs> choice two, 2P plus 3Q. Oh man, got a little bit switched over there. Sorry about that. Okay. Question number six. 
When rounded to the nearest hundredth, log base 3 of 7 is equal to 1.77, which the following represents the log of 3, base 3 of 63, 63 round to nearest hundredth. Hence, write 63 as a product involving 7. Okay, so log of 63 as a product of 7, I think it's 9 times 7. So that's equal to the log of 9 times 7. And so here what we're going to do is we're going to use our product rule. Oh, and by the, way, it's, by the way, it's log base 3, which is very important for us. So log base 3 of 63 equals log base 3 of 9, 9 times 7. So our product rule says we're going to rewrite them as a sum of two logs, log base 3 of 9 plus log base 3 of 7. Now, log base 3 of 7 is going to be 1.77. And now, log base 3 of 9, well, let's see now. What number? Okay, we said we don't know what it is. We'll let n, not, n be log base 3 of 9. So as an exponential equation, we take the base, raise exponent, equal to the answer here. So that means 3 to the n equals 9. And we know that 9 is really 3 squared. Therefore, n equals 2. And since n equals 2, and that's what log of 9, log base 3 of 9 is, that's where I get the 2 here. So now it's adding 2 plus 1.7, which add together will give us 3.77. And that's going to be choice 3. So yes, we want to separate this, and we see in this case we can get a log base 3 of 9 plus log base 3 of 7. Log base 3 of 9 we can find the value of by rewriting, evaluating it as a, as a, back into an exponential equation and use our, 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 our knowledge with that. Ooh, the expression for log x plus 1 half log y plus 3 log z can be written equivalently as, well, Let's now try to put this together as a single log. The very first thing I want to deal with are these coefficients. And to do that, we're using our power rule. And the power rule says they're going to be moved into becoming exponents for the inputs. So we'll now get, because of power rule, log of x to the fourth minus log of y to the one-half plus log of z to the third. Please remember, power rule works, works both ways. A lot of times we are moving the exponent into the front to be coefficient, though. But we can also move the coefficient to become the, the input, to become the exponent of the input. Right? And by the way, we had mentioned before, this y to the one-half power is can be written as the square root of y. So really this now becomes log of x to the fourth minus log of the square root of y plus log of z to the third. Now since we're adding, we're actually adding and subtracting in this case logs, we'll use or operations. We're going to combine here these two first, the log of x to the fourth minus log of square root of y. And since we have a minus here, we're using our quotient rule. Our quotient rule says we can combine these two logs into a single log, but where they are dividing each other, where the first one, where the, the first input is the numerator of the fraction, and the second input is the denominator. So, log base log x to the fourth minus log of log of squared y becomes log x to the fourth over squared y and now we combine using our using our prod rule and so our prod rule we see here we are going to combine to a single log and when the, when the two logs are adding each other we're going to multiply the insides so we have log of 
x to the fourth over square root of y times z to the third. But in this case, to combine to a single fraction here, we're going to get log of x to the fourth z to the third over square root of y. And this will be the answer we're going to get. This is our answer here. And we see in this case which one matches up. It looks like x to the 4z cubed squared y. Choice 1 is our correct answer here. For number 8, if k equals log base 2 of 3, then log base 2 of 48 is equal to how much? Well, let's take a look here. Well, log base 2 of 48, if we do a prime factorization here, we'll do, in this case, two numbers multiplied to 48. Uh, we'll say, in this case, maybe um, 4 and 12. Okay? And 4 is 2 times 2. And those are prime. 12 is 3 times 4. And 4 is also 2 times 2. So log of 48 really is going to be the log of 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. And we'll rewrite this as, as a prop rule. Let me just see if I can move everything over here so it's not so crowded. There you go. Okay. So now we'll write these prop rules, separate them all, log. You know, it'd be easier if we wrote this as log of 2 to the 4th times 3. Maybe that would be easier, because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 2 to the 4th. And so here, we'll rewrite this as prop rule, log of 2 to the 4th. And, oh, forgot to put down base 2. Very important for our problem here plus log base 2 of 3. Okay, now, in this situation, I'm going to use power rule to bring the exponent down here. So now we can get, in this case, we get 4 log base 2 of 2 plus log base 2 of 3. Now you're saying, well, log base 2 of 2, can we find that value? Sure log base 2 of 2, or 2, log base 2 of 2 equals n, that would mean 2 to the n equals 2 to the first. Wait a minute, that means n equals 1. This is a 2 here. So, we can replace log base 2 of 2, because that's equal to n, with 1. So we have 4 times 1 plus, and we're going to replace the log base 2 of 3 with k, because that's what we have here. So we now get 4 plus k, or k plus 4. So the answer for this one will be choice 4. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, at this point, we're going to stop here, and this is the end of our Algebra 2 Exponential Functions, Lesson Number 10, Laws of Logarithms, Home Review, Part 2. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. We really appreciate it. And also, if you have not done so already, please subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications to be alerted when new videos are added, as well as leave any comments or questions in the comment section below. We we'll always appreciate when people leave comments and all hopefully constructive. Let me know what things I can do better. And of course, what we can, what other things we can do to help help you guys learn math. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Take care and be safe.